Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this hearing, the framework of the 180th period of sessions. This um, hearing uh, is to follow up on case 12920, Spencer Friend and Walter Panezo versus Guatemala. I am joined in this hearing by Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena. Among other responsibilities, is a rapporteur for the rights of women and for Afro descendants, and Joela Mendez, the rapporteur for the human rights defenders. I am Antonio Rejola, the president of the uh, commission and the rapporteur for indigenous peoples. I am joined by the team of the executive secretariat and from the uh, secretariat for cases and petitions. I have Ignacio Bolier and Erika Acuña. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to the interpreters who are joining us today. Good morning to the presenters of the state. Since this is a case hearing, it has a predetermined schedule. I hope we can all follow. First of all, I'm going to give the floor to Erika Acuña from the Executive Secretariat for uh, Cases and Petitions. For uh, Yes, thank you, President. So this case is about the elite responsibility of the state for the death of Spencer Friend and the lesions to Walter Panezo as a consequence of the disproportionate use of lethal force by state agents. On August 1st, 2013, com the commission accepted the admissibility report in which uh, it declared that several articles of the American Convention were um, acceptable, Articles 5, 1, 8, and 25. The Commission now accepted that the parties will present uh, the following comments on the possible measures of reparation. Thank you, Eric. Now I'm going to give the floor to the petitioner for 25 minutes. You're going to see a timer on your screen that is gonna give you the use of time. We need to stick to it. So once the 25 minutes are over, we are going to uh, uh, interrupt you because we need to stick to the schedule in order to, so, so that everyone can speak. After that, I'm going to give the floor to the state for another 25 minutes. Afterwards, the petitioner will have five minutes to reply, and then the state will have another five minutes to reply. And afterwards, the commission will have a space to ask questions to the parties. And depending on the remaining time, we will once again give the floor to both parties. Those who require interpretation will see the icon on, of a globe. You can click on it to choose the language you wish to listen to. And I, we also have closed captions. These are subtitles for the uh, hearing impaired. This hearing is also being broadcasted live on our Facebook page and also Twitter. So having said this, I will give the floor to the petitioner to use their 25 minutes. Thank you. Good morning, honorable members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, representatives of the state of Guatemala, family members of the victims. First of all, we would like to share a video from the family of Mr. Spencer Friend, and then we will listen to Valentina Friend and her mother, Francisca Mondarmoso. And finally, the legal teams of the um, Center for Human Rights of the um, Catholic University of Ecuador and the Regional Foundation for Human Rights of Fundación Regional de Asesoría en Derechos Humanos in red. I miss him so much. 
My name is Francisca Montermoso. My son was named Spencer Alexander Friend Montermoso. Spencer was a dear to me. Whenever he got home, he was so happy. He was so good to his siblings and to me. He would bring me food, he would cook. I miss my son so much. I am ill. And when you're, when I was ill, he would buy medication for me. Here you go, mommy. Take this medication, he would say. And I would take it so happily. Spencer would go out fishing with his boat. And when the fishing was good, he would get uh, here after eight days or 15 days, depending on how long it took for them to get the fish. They would come back to the port here in Manta. And when he left that day, he gave me a hug and said, mommy, I'm going. And I said, okay, son, God bless you. His boat was damaged. And apparently he tried to turn it on and then they left. And they were on the water and they met those, that people from Guatemala. But they didn't tell them to stop. He just, he was there and boom, they shot him and they killed him. But he was still alive. And then they actually denied it. They said they had left him. I don't know where, but it was a lie. We have waiting for so many years. This is Spencer Friend's sister. And let's hope we are at the final stages of this proceeding. And let's hope my mother is alive to see that justice was made that she doesn't go to her grave wondering about this. Madame Valentina, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. My name is Valentina Tatiana Friend Montermoso. I am the sister of Spencer Alexander Friend Montermoso, who passed away. I would like to summarize a bit of what I know. When my brother left, went fishing on May 16, 2005, on his boat called Angel Junior the First, he left Manta. They, there were seven people on the boat. My brother would always go out fishing for 15 to 20 days. They left Manta's port with their usual work. They were fishermen and they would bring fish and they went to Galapagos and in Galapagos, they had a problem with their boat. And while in Galapagos, they sailed adrift and they tried to call for help, but no one answered. And afterwards, the sea dragged them to Guatemala's waters, and they were there adrift. And they were, it was at, at night, and a couple of boats from Guatemala's coast, board, coast guard, sorry. 
And when they saw it was dark, they started shooting and they got frightened. And my brother, who was uh, below, because he was the captain, he was the mechanic, the um, chief of engines. And when he heard the gunshots, he left the engine room, he went up and a bullet hit him in the head. Another bullet hit a partner of his in his leg. And these men then got on the boat, took the man who was injured, and they checked the uh, boat where they didn't find anything illegal. According to what one of the um, crew members said, they had fish. And these men asked them to throw uh, the fish into the sea so that there wouldn't be evidence. They took them to jail as if they were criminals and they got my brother who was injured and his uh, colleague who was injured as well. And they took them to a hospital. I think it's called Juan de Dios. And they performed surgery on my brother. He was in a serious condition and then he passed away. His crew members were kept uh, in jail for 24 hours. They vulnerated his communication rights. They were unable to communicate. They mistreated them. They didn't treat them as human beings. They isolated them. They didn't allow them to get in touch with their families. And my brother, once he passed away, he was buried as a John Doe. They even said that he didn't have his documents on him. And that's a lie because they all had their identity cards. So that's what we're trying to say. They kept those facts from us. And when in Manta, we learned that someone had died on the boat and someone had been injured, we as family members went to meet Mr. Flores, the owner of the boat, and demanded that he would tell us the truth. And we wanted to know if the dead man was my brother. He said he was. So as a family, we started to get in touch with the media in Manta. Whenever something ha like this happens to anyone, it shocks everyone. So the media started to broadcast the news. We called the embassy our embassy in Guatemala, and they confirmed that it was true. We also asked for the help of the office of the ombudsperson. The crew members said that they asked for help at the Ecuadorian consulate, and they said that nothing could be done. So. After all of this, the uh, ombudsman came to Manta and said, ma'am, don't worry, we're going to help and I'm gonna bring your son's body. And that's what happened. He sent a delegation to investigate, to bring back his body. Then, about 20 days later, they brought his body. And that's when we presented the lawsuit. Because everyone would tell us, you have to do this. Because the people who hurt and who, who hurt the other man and who killed your brother are free. Guatemala has done nothing. And they cannot get away with it. So that's what happened. And we, the process evolved. We don't have the money, we don't have the funds to support this. So to, we don't have the funds 
to um, help uh, with um, or to support a swift case. So this has been moving on quite slowly, but thank goodness this uh, came to the inter-American stage, to the inter-American system, where we are now able to talk to you and we are telling you how things happened because the rights of a person were violated, the, the rights of a son. So we want the truth. I am here with my mother. My mother is disabled. She has, she's hearing impaired. She cannot hear. She hears only a little bit. So I'm going to ask her to talk to you. Her name is Francisca Celina Montermoso. And I'm going to let her talk to you. Mami. How was your son to you? My son was such a dear to me. He would always think of me and he would always visit me and I miss him so much. I miss him till this day. He had so many friends. He loved his friend. Whenever he got from his trips, he would bring him little gifts. He would even give him what he didn't have. He gave him, he gave them food. So everyone was in pain after what happened because he was so nice wherever he went. How did your son's death affect you? Oh, the fact that he died. I became ill. Um, I, had, I developed heart disease. And even today, I need to take my pills, I need them. As I said, I developed heart disease. I developed a serious heart disease. I wasn't hungry anymore. I couldn't even drink water. I felt unwell all the time. Now I'm a bit better with the medication, but sometimes I didn't even have the money to buy the medication. What do you expect from the commission gathered here? I expect, because how long ago did he die? And still this hasn't been solved? How can people be so mean? How can they be so mean? Those people who murdered my son, my good son, but that's life. They kill the good ones and the dead one, sorry, the bad ones remain. You heard my mother, she's asking for justice. So, so do I, as a representative for the family, as you've heard, many years have gone by. So I would like to request on behalf of the family to the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights to please review the process, please analyze it, please get to the truth. Because my brother was a working man, a good man. He was not a criminal. He never did anything illegal. We do have the proof of everything that was done in the proceedings. So we want the truth. We want justice. We want your support. We want your help as a family. I, I don't think anyone would like to lose a loved one like that. And please punish the ones who did it. They cannot get away with it. They cannot walk around in the streets knowing that they killed a man after having destroyed a home because my brother 
supported my mother. That's all I can say with regards to my family. We need your support. Please bring us justice for my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Valentina, and Mrs. for listening, uh, for giving your testimonies. I would like to talk now on behalf of the victims. We should talk about the violation of the right to life of Mr. Spencer, who was one of the crew members of the uh, boat who was, who was sailing adrift and was uh, on the same day the Coast Guard of Guatemala opened fire against the boat and uh, killed uh, Mr. Spencer and also uh, injured other of the crew members. According to the convention, uh, we see that there is an arbitrary deprivation of life. And taking into consideration the uh, case law, there is uh, a deprivation of life where there is an excessive use of force. And therefore, we would like to uh, say that the state of Guatemala is responsible for the deprivation of life of Mr. Spencer, especially uh, because those who use the force are state agents, the Coast Guard of Guatemala. Also, they shot 10 bullets against the boat. And also, we see that the state of Guatemala recognize uh, the, that they use arms of high caliber for this. And also we would like to say that if they need uh, to use our weapons uh, to comply with the regulations, even though that the uh, even though the court has said that the uh, Coast Guard shouldn't use gunfire in these cases. And therefore, uh, in this instant case, we see that there are two boats from Guatemala, the Coast Guard boat and another uh, quick boat. And both boats uh, uh, shot uh, the boat of the Ecuadorian people. And this is illegal taking into consideration the boat and the crew members because we see a disproportionate use of force by the Coast Guard of Guatemala. Since the victims did not resist, they were unarmed and they were trying to return to Ecuadorian uh, waters after solving the failure of their boat. So what we see that this deprivation of life is an arbitrary deprivation of life to Mr. Spencer. Also, we see that there has been a violation to the integrity of the victims. Thank you. With regard to the violation of the right to integrity of Mr. Spencer and friend and his family members, we would like to say the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights establishes in Article 4.1 the right to personal integrity that also re includes the respect to mental and physical integrity, the shots against the boat and the death of Mr. Spencer friend. Also, we see that uh, one of the members of the crew was injured in one of his legs. Also, we see that there is uh, that we have the principle of exceptionality and distinction, especially in the attacks. Uh, regarding the excessive use of force by the state, it's important to say that the Inter-American Convention has mentioned the principles of legitimacy and proportionality. And the court has also determined that there has been an attack of integrity when these principles are not uh, fulfilled. There is a violation of the American Convention in these cases. And also, uh, the uh, state said that the use of force was allowed because the crew members were trying to run away. With regard to the violation of psychological and physical integrity, following the testimonies of Francisca and Valentina, we see that there were several violations of rights of the crew members of the vote. In addition, the Inter-American Court in several cases has considered that the family members of the victims of human rights violations can be victims. 
The suffering caused to the victims also go, affects the closest members of the families, especially those who have a close relationship with the victims. Also, the court has said that the death of a person also caused effects on family members, especially irreparable harm. Be and what we see is that every person uh, experiments pain and grief after the death of a family member. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to one of the lawyers of the Human Rights Advisory Group of, what, uh, of Ecuador. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, we have listened to Francisca Spencer Friend and her sister. It's difficult for the mother to say goodbye to a son and not see him again. We know that there was a problem in the machine room of the boat, and this led to his death after that because he was shot. And the state of Guatemala violated the principle of presumption of innocence that is covered by Article 76 of the Constitution of the Ecuador and also in one of the articles of the American Convention of Human Rights. So this principle has been violated, being a human rights principle, and the due process of the victims was not guaranteed in addition. Also, the Navy of the state of Guatemala did not warn the crew members. However, the state of Guatemala decided to face the Ecuadorian boat uh, because they presumed that it was a pirate boat. And after that, there was a bigger boat that decided to shot the crew members of the Ecuadorian boat. These shots forced the members of the crew of the Ecuadorian boat to request for, uh, help. The actions of the Navy of the Guatemalan state should have been different. They should have asked so that people could have exercised their right to defense. And therefore, a Spencer friend was shot in his head, and therefore he had to be taken to the hospital as a result of the shot. But he and he didn't have the possibility of having communication with friends or with family members, with a lawyer, to having access to justice. Also, taking into consideration what happened to Spencer friend, we need to take into consideration a specific proceeding, and the state should have investigated the facts. However, up to now, there has been no investigation for this extrajudicial execution. The state of Guatemala says that there is an open investigation for the injuries, but the investigation should be done through all the legal means in order to determine the truth and to persecute the capture and trial and punish all those responsible for the death. The actions of the state of Guatemala show that there is a lack of due diligence in the proceeding. And we would like to say that this investigation should be because of an extrajudicial execution. And the state of Guatemala has not provided information that they have identified those responsible for this. And also there is a violation to the right to access to justice in this case, due to the lack of investigation of the extrajudicial execution. The court says that an unwarranted delay could imply a violation of the judicial guarantee, so the right to fair trial. Now I would like to give the floor. I think that you should be closing because you're running out of time. So now I would like to give the time to one of the National Conventions of Human Rights of Ecuador. You are running out of time. Uh, would you like to leave this for the reply? Commissioner, it's just one minute to make this petition, please. Thank you. Honorable commissioners, and representatives of the state of Guatemala, we would like to say that there has been a violation of Article 8 of the American Convention. Uh, he has, uh, for example, me, uh, the other, uh, the person that was injured had no right to be listened to, to be heard of, and he did not have any access to justice. 
and based on all the arguments and allegations proposed, we request the commission to take into consideration all the evidence and all our statements to continue with the merits of this report, taking into consideration the violations of uh, the articles of the American Convention with regard to uh, Article 1 and 2 of the American Convention and also Article 4 of the American Convention with regard to or with relation to Article 1 of the American Convention. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state for 25 minutes. Good morning. Now we would like to start with our presentation. I would like to uh, request sharing the screen to share a presentation. Honorable Commissioners of the uh, Inter-American Commission and also representatives of civil society. I'm here now to present the reasons why the Inter-American Commission should close the file uh, for case 12,920 since there is no violation of the American Convention or we should also request in case there is a merits report not to forward the case to the Inter-American Court. In order to conduct the analysis, the Inter-American Commission should take into consideration the following. One, that the entry of the alleged victims to the waters of Guatemala was done in an illegal and unusual way, which is something that the petitioners are not saying the entry to the waters of Guatemalan jurisdiction was because of a failure of their, their boat and they sell adrift. And they were in waters of the Guatemaltecan waters. But this is impossible because uh, when they say that they is because they ran away when they identified that one of the boats that were there was uh, from the uh, Coast Guard of Guatemala. In addition, it's important to mention that the destination of the crew members of the boat was the United States. And this has been proved before the competent judge after what Valentina said in the hearing, the Army of Guatemala, following the international obligations, uh, tried to comply with its work because there was a boat that was there in an illegal way, and the boat decided to run away. And they first tried to warn the crew members using different uh, visual signs because they wanted to stop the boat. They also conducted several maneuvers with the military forces in order to stop the boat, but this proved ineffective because the boat decided not to stop. Also, the uh, boat, uh, the legal boat, collision with one of the boats of the Coast Guard of Guatemala. Also, taking into consideration all these uh, evidence, the boat is, or the Coast Guard boat decided to use force take, and there was no violation of the Inter American Convention of Human Rights as it was will be explained ex, be, uh, in, a, in the future. Different means were used before using the force, but because of the attitude of the crew members and the alleged victims, the boat did not stop. And therefore, the principle of proportionality was respected because uh, the crew members were not shot directly. And they, and after that, they decided to show the boat after receiving shot, uh, sh uh, shots from the uh, uh, members of the boat. Also then, as a last resort, the co uh, Coast Guard decided to shoot to the engine of the boat. The alleged victims were transferred to a national hospital in order to receive health care in a per adequate way. And therefore, this showed that the state of Guatemala did not 
intend to cause damage to the crew members of the boat. And those people who were who, who were not injured were uh, had to appear before the competent authorities. And the criminal procedure that was uh, correct was conducted. And because of the lack of evidence, these people were released. And this was also ratified by the Council of the Victims. And also this shows that there was a due process. Also, these people were deported from the state of Guatemala. guatemalteca interna en relación a las acciones cometidas por the action of Guatemala and the actions of the petitioners. First of all, it is important to say that the inter-American system for the protection of human rights is only subsidiary, which allows to solve uh, controversies within this jurisdiction. Second, the legislation of Guatemala has domestic legislation that uh, tries to solve circumstances like the ones in these cases. And the Constitution of Guatemala in its Article 244 allows the army to protect the territory. And in the case of the defense of the, war, of the water, national waters, this goes in accordance with Executive Order 2076. We also have a general agriculture and fishing law, which allows the Coast Guard to pursue foreign ships who uh, don't have a flag identifying its nationality. It's important to consider that the Ministry for Defense points out that this boat did not have a flag and did not have documentation allowing it to be at, uh, inter at Guatemalan waters. It is also important to say that the Ministry for the Defense of Guatemala has a regulationary protocol for these cases, which uh, proposes the following uh, actions, verifying that the uh, suspicious boat is in the jurisdiction of the state. Second, to approach the ship to intercept it. Three, to ask the boat to stop. And fourth, to signal it to stop. And five, should everything fail, Preemptive shots will be uh, fired to inform the ship that it should stop. And the final alternative should be to disable, to shoot and disable the engine of the suspicious boat. So as you can see, it is never mentioned that this, the guards should fire the crew. So the Guatemalan officers act, acted in accordance to the protocol. It is also necessary to mention the criminal process the uh, victim, Walter Panenzo, was submitted to. He was benefited, sorry, benefited by the uh, presentation of the uh, public prosecution, and he was expelled from our national territory because his staying there contradicted the migra migration law back then, which stipulated that people who did not comply with its requirements should be sanctioned as uh, with ex the expulsion from a national territory. We should also say that this law established that in certain situations, the permanence of the foreign citizen is considered illegal. And he had entered the country through um, means that were not accepted and he was not submitted to migration control. He also did not comply with the provisions for entering the country. Also, the petitioners point out that because of the expulsion, um, they were, he was unable to uh, judge him. And he said that he did not have the uh, means to uh, stay in Guatemala. So the um, public prosecutor in Ecuador was able to give the alleged victim with a public defendant to protect his human rights. And he could defend him domestically and also in the, the inter-American system. 
So having exposed the way in which this legislation works, it, it's important to mention the CONVEMAR, the Convention on the Sea, and how this was respected by the state of Guatemala. First of all, it is important to make a reference to the um, Paso Innocente or the Innocent Step. It is a citizen that, uh, sorry, a right that all citizens have to sail at ships, uh, in ships where in foreign waters. This CONVEMAR tells us that uh, this can be used to uh, protect and safeguard the rights of these people. But it is important to say that the petitioners talk about the uh, 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 how they say that the victims entered the uh, Guatemalan waters. They say that they sailed adrift for four out for four days. So it is understood that the ship needed assistance but its, citizens, its crew did not ask for help. And they didn't stop when they saw the forces of security, the security forces of Guatemala. But actually they tried to flee from these forces, which of course would raise suspicions. And this goes to show that the alleged victims did not respect the Convemar and um, went against these regulations and did not ask for help as stipulated on the international code which also expresses that it is mandatory for the safety of human lives at sea to ask for help and what the ecuador undersigned that co convention they should have also had um lifeboats and life vests, among others. It is understood that these are artifacts all ships should have. So the crew should have used those instruments to show the um, Guatemalan authorities that they were at an emergency. They could have tried to, uh, to ask for help with lights, for example. The state also has a, a right to follow foreign ships if they have justified reasons to believe that the sheep are contradicting the regulations of the state. The pursuit is approved when the ship is on the territorial waters and can only go on outside the territorial waters if the persecution is not interrupted. Foreign ships are expected to stop when in national waters. If the foreign ship is on the contiguous uh, area defined on Article 33, the security forces of Guatemala are allowed to act and try to stop it. And this was reported on the report presented by the state. The um, Guatemalan Coast Guard tried to make this uh, ship stop. So since there was no violation from the state of Guatemala on the of the um, rights enshrined on the Inter-American Convention, first of all, we would like to say that it is evident there was no violation of the articles uh, uh, that appear on the admissibility report. This, the art, these articles, articles 4, 5, 8, and 25, regulate the right to life. And the petitioners say that they were violated. And that is not true because there are international regulations as the principal uh, principles on the use of force and gunfires by state agents from the UN. And all these treaties and conventions are there to assist uh, states on how to deal with these matters. So in this case, state officials are allowed to use force or gunfire when other means fail 
Also, the Inter-American Court in cases like Lodaeta, Mejias and others versus Guatemala stated that when the use of force is the last resort, they need to be uh, follow need and proportionality and state agents respected the uh, old principles because they were trying to stop an unknown ship that was not identified and that was disobeying or that was not uh, obeying the uh, authorities of Guatemala. They also respected the principle of need because they uh, directed their force to the ship, not to the crew. This occurred, this only occurred because they refused to stop. And finally, the principle of proportionality was respected by the state of Guatemala because the Inter-American Court makes a reference to the level of resistance that was offered. In this case, they resisted because the ship that was expected to stop did not cooperate after a pursuit because it kept going in spite of all the signals emitted by the forces of the state. And also based on the proportionality of the damage, they fired shots against the ship in order to try to stop it. So they always followed international regulations. Now, with regards to Article 5.1 of the American uh, convention, convention, this article regulates the right to personal integrity. All persons have the right to have their psychic, moral, and physical integrity respected. But it is impossible for the state of Guatemala to have affected the uh, six psychic integrity of the family of the victims, of the alleged victims. And in this case, they did not affect uh, the freedom or the liberties or did not torture the families of the alleged victims. Third, with respect to Articles 8.1 and 25, with regards to Walter Paneso, with regards to the right to a fair trial, the Inter-American Court has manifested that Article 8 is recognized as the due legal process where the alleged victim, when, once it was submitted to a proceeding that observed and respected the warranties of the country, and he was benefited because the judge let him go and said he was free to go. Now, to the alleged victims, they were never imposed any hurdles in the process against Walter Panesso. Actually, they say that he was favored because they let him go, then said he was free. So they, it cannot be said that there was any sort of indication of them trying to, um, to affect them or damage them. Now, in Article 72, there's a legal figure by which a judge determines that there are no proof to uh, go on with the proceeding, but he can not um, exonerate them. And because of that legal situation, even though one can say that there was a crime committed, there are no proof. So the person is let go. Investigation is still going on because uh, it's important to understand that the system of Guatemala is based on objective investigations and there is also a technical expertise. In this regard, the office of the Attorney General uh, said that there was a lack of evidence because there was no evidence to uh, for the crew members to be left in pre-trial prevention. The Attorney General Office is in charge of the investigation of the alleged facts in order to reach the truth. And there are actions that have been carried out in order to access to justice, especially in the investigation thing is based on the presumption of innocence of all the persons, including the state agents. Also, there are effective legal remedies in Guatemala based on the American Convention according to Article 25. And these remedies were used by the petitioners to uh, um, show their interests. 
also they, are, they can use an Ampala read in case they need it. And therefore, they, instead of using the domestic remedies of Guatemala, they decided to wrongly uh, go to the Inter-American Commission. With regard to the rights contained in Articles 8.1 and 25.1, with regard to the family members of the victims, we would like to say that we have not violated their rights. First, in the instant case, por parte de los agentes estatales, como los familiares de la presunta víctima, execution. Even though the family members of the victim have interpreted this as such, and they are saying before the commission that we have no investigated, and according to the state of Guatemala, we uh, believe that we are conducting an investigation, and also we are working in that. And also, do you, uh, we need to take into consideration that the due diligence has to do with the following: that uh, the we are trying to respect the jurisdiction of the state, and there is no judicial extra um, extrajudicial execution since the. Uh, actions or the alleged facts occur when the state agents were trying to conduct their work as stated. And if the state agents would have wanted to conduct an extrajudicial execution, no health care would have been provided to the alleged victims. In this regard, it is also important to say that the court in several occasions taken into consideration the manual for the prevention and effective investigation of arbitrary and extrajudicial executions of the UN has specified the principles that are important. And especially when a death that established when a death could be an extrajudicial execution. And the same happened with the massacre of Lisote and also uh, against El Salvador. And the court mentioned that in some cases, when there is an extrajudicial execution, a state should investigate any violation of the right to life, taking into consideration Article 4 of the American Convention, especially taking investigating all those who have participated in the alleged facts. Also, the state authorities that conduct an investigation should at least try to identify the victims to preserve the indicative evidence regarding the death of the person, taking into consideration the investigation of those responsible. Also, they should obtain testimonies regarding the death that is being investigated, and they should determine the cause and the place and date of the death. And also to determine if this was a suicide or an accident or a homicide or a murder. Also, the state conducted all the necessary uh, diligences with regard to the following. First, identify the body of Mr. Spencer to, to receive the testimonies of all those presents. Also, the, the state has collected all the evidence based on ocular inspections. Also, uh, there were some people that said that their rights were not violated. And finally, it is necessary to say that due to the nature of the Attorney General Office as autonomous, and therefore the functions of that institution is not to satisfy the needs of the state of Guatemala. Their goal is to conduct an objective investigation. Also, we would like to say they, the petitioners are not here because of access to justice. Four years have elapsed. They uh, do not exhaust the domestic remedies of Guatemala, and they decided to come to the commission. And it's also necessary to say that, say that the petitioners are here in bad faith because they are not here in good faith, because good faith is a, the uh, belief that people believe that the uh, others will act uh, with, with goodwill. And also, 
And also, it's important to take into consideration that we have documents uh, that the um, the alleged victims did not have the necessary documentation to be navigating or to be on the waters of the state of Guatemala. And therefore, they did not act in good faith. And they are resorting to the system of the state of Guatemala in spite of being having no record, not even for the vote regarding the state of Guatemala. So we can understand that from the very beginning, the victims were not complying with the regulations of the state of Guatemala and did not have the required documentation to be in the waters of Guatemala. You are running out of time. So please, we need for you to wrap up your presentation. In addition, the petitioners did not act in good faith because in the admissibility report, the commission only admitted the petition of Walter Paneso and Spencer Montermoso, in spite of the fact that the petitioners in their brief uh, make reference to other victims. Also, the actions of the petitioners from the very beginning, taking into consideration the brief of 2011, they knew that there were different petitioners because the petition of 2007 was against Guatemala, when, even though then there was another petition that was presented against Ecuador. Uh, be, and therefore, they show differences even in their petitions that they presented. And therefore, we see that in their brief, the request made by the petitioners could create some problems because they are inconsistent. Also, there were other victims, Mr. Jimenez, Oscar Chavay, Hugo Eugenio, and Freddy Eduardo. They say in their statements that they were traveling to the United States to uh, fulfill their American dream to work in the United States. So in light of all the things that have been said, it requests the Inter-American Commission that the commission says that there was no violation of the articles 5.1, 8.1, and 25.1 with regard to Walter Paneso and Spencer Fred Montermoso in relation to article 1.1 of the convention. To say that there was a violation of article 4 of the Inter American Com of the American Convention in relation to article 1.1 against or to the detriment of Fred Montermoso. Also, taking into consideration all the information that we have provided, we want for the commission to close the case because there was no violation of any human rights. And this has to do with articles 4.1, 5.1, 8.1, and 25.1 of the American Convention. Please, we need for you to wrap up your presentation with relation to Article 1.1. Also, in case that the commission decides to continue working on the merits, we would like to uh, recommend that the case is not forwarded to the Inter-American Court. The commission in the past requested the state of Guatemala to present information. And now with this, the state has provided information and is closing its presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to give the floor now to the petitioners for five minutes so that they can use their right to reply. Muchas gracias, honorable commissioner. Thank you so much, honorable commissioner. With regards to the allegations presented by the state of Guatemala, we would like to say that uh, with regards to the illegal uh, entrance, we need to remember Article 19 of Convemar, which regulates the innocent passage that is explicit and it says that while it, this uh, access does not uh, affect the security, this passage is regulated in accordance to international law. So in according to the state of Guatemala, the threat, sorry, the um, it was trying to uh, reject the Ecuadorian ship in order to uh, protect its borders. But 
did they not respect the standard of need because the Ecuadorian ship did not pose a threat to the national sovereignty. It did not represent any threat to the um, territorial integrity and or the uh, Guatemalan state and the means to uh, stop the um, so-called aggression was not uh, adequate. You can see the guns that were used and the state of Guatemala says that they didn't shoot the crew, that they shot the ship, but that makes no sense because two crew members were seriously injured. One of them died. With regards to the investigation, it surprises us that the state says, for example, that they did investigate the deportation of, for the deportation of uh, Walter Panes, but they did not investigate the uh, extrajudicial execution of Spencer Fred. So we should be clear about the use, the proportional and excessive use of force and the harmful result because it was the death of Spencer Friend, which was never investigated as it should have been in accordance to international standards of human rights. With regards to the medical care of Spencer Friend, yes, he was cared for, but the result led to the death of Spencer. Had they really tried to protect the life of Spencer Fred, they would never have shot him. And what's the reason for the so-called persecution executed against the Ecuadorian ship because they never reported on radio that this was a sea patrol of the state of Guatemala. And that is why the Ecuadorian ship kept going. And yes, they were in Guatemala because of a problem with the ship. And Mr. Spencer, since he was the head of the engine chief and the captain of the ship, managed to somehow fix the ship with cardboard in accordance to the uh, testimonies incorporated to the process. We should also say that with regards to the um, time lapse and the inactivity in the proceeding of four years, we should remind you that there have been 16 years without a serious investigation on the death of Spencer Friend. And there have been no sanctions either in accordance to the uh, Inter-American standards and the decisions of the Inter-American court with regards to serious and swift investigation that the state should carry out in the case of human rights violations. Now, my co-representatives will speak. Honorable Commission, the state of Guatemala also says that there was lack, a lack of procedural activity. The state should always investigate. This was expressed in the cases of Las Espais versus Guatemala, where because the state is supposed to uh, promote the, the investigation, they are trying to um, make the family members to uh, carry out the investigation when it was already established that people, in the cases of family, that family members do not have the means to hire a private lawyer uh, to uh, get to the truth. So it's not the responsibility of the family to carry out the investigation. It's the state that they should be carrying out the investigation. The state of Guatemala says that they have performed an investigation, but the death, but that was about lesions. The death of Mr. Sprint was not a lesion. And in the response of the Guatemalan state to the commission, they textually say, it has been not been proven in the investigation. What, in, in, what investigation are they talking about when they're actually saying that there was no investigation and that so far no one has been held accountable for the death of Mr. Friend and for the injuries sustained by Mr. Paneso. Please wrap up. 
um, they also talk about the procedural activity of the victims. They violated the right of Mr. Panessa to be heard. There was no uh, presumption of innocence. He did not have the access to an attorney. And the same occurred with uh, Mr. Friend. He did not have a right to uh, presumption of innocence. He was not heard and he was unable to defend himself because he passed away after he was shot. With regards to extrajudicial execution, the state of Guatemala has said that there was no responsibility, but they haven't said why they are allowing state agents to execute uh, civilians, like the case of Mr. Friend. Now I will give the floor to the state to speak for another five minutes. Thank you. In this case, it is impossible to say that there was a violation to the human rights of people by the state of Guatemala. In this case, this case started for uh, an uncompliance with the law of the alleged victims and the images that were presented by the petitioners do not match uh, a boat of the uh, security forces of Guatemala. And the actions of the alleged victims were illegal. And considering that they were the first ones to violate the right to passage, as was exposed by the state, they are the ones who hit the Guatemalan ships. So they actually provoked the persecution. Also, they themselves failed to meet their national regulations since they did not have the documentation to be identified. And what's even more, more important, and a preliminary requirement, they did not have a flag on the ship, which was, so it was cataloged as a pirate ship. So the authorities of the state of Guatemala acted following national and international protocols. And so the use of force was proportional. And considering that they are not, the, what, the requirements of an extrajudicial execution are not met. It is also important to say that the state of Guatemala, just like many other states in Latin America, use an accusatory system where an inf where due investigation is necessary to identify uh, the perpetrators of a crime and then go on with the investigation. It is also important to say that opposed to what was said by the representatives of the alleged victims, their rights to due process were respected. A proof of that is that the uh, public prosecution being objective said that there was a lack of merit. Or So it is also important to say, especially um, specifically Mr. Paneso, who was, was who willingly decided not to uh, provide a statement when he was detained. And this was said by the representatives of the alleged victims. And it is also seen on the admissibility report. And this was also established on the admissibility report on paragraph 19. What happened to Mr. Monte Hermoso and Mr. Paneso was regrettable, but no fault can be applied to the state when this was this fact was provoked by the alleged victims when they did not have their documentation and when they did not respond to what the Guatemalan uh, 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 expuesto, eh, el Estado de Guatemala solicita el archivo del presente uh, caso o en su defecto que no se decida de la violación del Estado de Guatemala a los artículos 5.1, 8.1 Artículo 8, artículo 4 y artículo 25 uh, con relación a la convención. 4, 5, 8 and 25 of the Inter-American Convention. And with that, that, we will finish our intervention. Now, thank you. I would like to give the floor now to Commissioner Arosemena, that is the country reporter of Guatemala, if she has any questions to make first. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, everybody. 
I would like to greet all of you. Good morning. Uh, when I was listening to the state representatives regarding a key aspect that is the investigation for the death of a person, it, this was the violent death of a person. The state says that that is not applicable. But we know that there was a proceeding for Walter Panenzo, if I'm not wrong. And you determined that there was a lack of evidence. So how so for the situation and for the death of Mr. Spencer Friend, because you buried Mr. Spencer Friend Montermoso in Guatemala, in Guatemala as a Joe Doe. How so if there was a group of people in a boat and they left the boat, they went to the hospital and you provided them with health care For me, it is important for the state to tell me if right now you are conducting any type of investigation regarding the death of Mr. Spencer friend. Because there was a proceeding, but with regard to the death of a Spencer friend that was no investigation. That is what I would like to learn about. And I want the state to give me an answer. And also, I would like to know more regarding the gunfire that was used to stop the boat. Is that weapon within the parameters of a proportionate use of force because what we saw on the picture, I don't know the name of the weapon of the gunfire, but effectively, if that weapon did not break the boat in two, was going to be anyway very damaging because the weapon killed a Spencer and was and damaged his head. So I would like to know the sort of weapon that the Coast Guard used. And also they have another question, especially for the, the petitioners as well. With regard to the investigation, uh, because the state says that the petitioners never presented any remedy or action for reparation in Guatemala. So I would like to ask the petitioners to tell us about their reality. I think that Valentina and her mom were talking about this at the very beginning when they were uh, giving their testimony. So I would like to know the reason why you did not pursue any action in the state of Guatemala. That's all, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Esmeralda. Commissioner Margaret, would you like to ask any questions? Yes, thank you, Madam President. Good morning to everyone, um, the petitioners, the victims, the state of Guatemala representatives. I, I thank um, and support the questions of my sister, Commissioner Esmeralda. And um, if I can um, go on from there. In relation to the shooting, I also have a question, at least one. And this is if following 
the rules of trying to stop a vehicle, uh, a boat um, uh, on the seas, the um, state uh, coast guard was doing it according to acceptable practices and standards. You shoot at the back and you shoot to the front, be beyond the front of the ship. And so I, I am, like my sister Esmeralda, confused to understand how one of the crew got to be shot in the head and another was wounded. If uh, they had not, they did not aim into the boat, the fishing boat, the boat of the victims. I, I, I do not understand how those injuries could have happened. Um, and this is a question for the state, um, that first one. And the second one is this. I do not understand if the Coast Guard felt confident in their legal action and they took the victims to the hospital. Why is it that Spencer Friend was not identified to the hospital? Why was he left there as an unknown and died there as an unknown? Because he, him, as, as it is said by the petition, uh, representatives or the petitioners, they all had their IDs. And even if they didn't, he didn't. The Coast Guard should have said he was a victim of ours from us trying to stop their boat um, on the sea and, and we had shot him. The, he, he was injured from that. So he would have been identified as a victim of the shooting of an incident at sea. That wasn't even there. So that leads one to question the legitimacy of the act of the people, the Coast Guard, who took them to the hospital, as the state said they did. And another question, Madam President, if I may, is I do not understand how the investigation can still be going on when the crew members no longer are no longer accessible to the Guatemalan authorities. Because if you're going to investigate, you have to talk to the people who were witnesses to what happened. And secondly, where is the boat in which the deceased and um, um, the injured Mr. Walter Penso, um, where, where is it? Uh, um, they were deported. And secondly, I do not understand why the state, if the state can, I'm sure, I'm sorry, all my questions seem to be to the state, why the state says that the fact that the judge found that there was no evidence and released Mr. Walter Panezo, why is it that the state says that really is nothing? In every other jurisdiction, and I'm a practicing lawyer, I know when a court says there is no evidence, I hope the state would agree that that means they had no basis to arrest them, they had no basis to detain them, and they had no basis to charge and prosecute them, that they were free of any culpability in the criminal law. So they were innocent. Uh, um, therefore, I think with that, I would end my questions, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. Commissioner Hernandez, you have the floor. I don't have any questions, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like the state to reply the questions are especially for the state. So now I would like to give the floor for five minutes to the state to answer as brief as possible to the questions. And after that, I would like to give the floor to the petitioners and to the representatives of the petitioners for if they want to add anything. 
So the state has five minutes and then uh, the representatives of the victims will have five minutes. Now I have here with me Commander Francisco Escobar, who was present on the date of the facts. Good morning. To answer the questions that you prepare, the first has to do with the position of the Guatemaltecan boats. When we decide on our operation plan, we saw the boat, and when we saw the boat, the first thing that we identified is that it had no flag. When there is no flag, we consider the boat that it was pirate because it had no identification. And therefore, we call them on the radio and we send different signal with lights, etc. And after that, uh, the there was a boat of the uh, Coast Guard that try to reach the boat of the alleged victims to inspect the boat to request the documents of these people and to know what was their situation. When this minor boat that is not the, when this a small boat tried to get to the a boat of the alleged victims, the boat of the alleged victims uh, hit that is small boat of the Coast Guard. And that's why the big Coast Guard boat that has identification decided to proceed. Some shoots, some, uh, shoots went to the air, they ignore and therefore they decided to shoot uh, the boat in the, for, uh, in the front. But since it was a fishing boat, they dis the, big, the alleged victims hide, hit. Sorry to interrupt you, but please, I would like the state to answer to the specific questions of the commissioners, because I understand that the commander or captain here is giving a statement as a witness, and that is not what uh, should be done. So please answer directly to the questions of the commissioners with regard to the investigation, the preparation to the victims, and the investigation regarding the facts. Now I would like to give you the floor back for three minutes. This is not a witness statement. He is answering to the questions of the commissioners. He was there on the date of the fact, so he's a person that uh, knows what happened. I'm here as a lawyer, and I'm answering the questions regarding the boat. And with that description, I wanted to tell you that the alleged victims hid in the machine room and when there was an inspection of the boat, we recognized that two people were injured. So this, therefore we decided to transfer those two persons to the Coast Guard boat and the Coast Guard boat took them to the land and transferred them to the hospital. Why they weren't identified? Because there was no flag, there were no documents and we don't have any information to identify the victims. Where is the boat? The boat is in the Pacific Naval Command uh, warehouse because where because uh, we also transfer all the people to that same place at the beginning. And with regard to the lack of evidence, those people were persecuted because their boat has had no flag. And when they try to when we try to communicate to them they decided to escape. So those are the answers to my quest, to the questions. It is also important to mention that the state of Ecuador uh, did not recognize uh, these people because they didn't have any ID documentation. And therefore, uh, they decided not to recognize these people. Good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Conde. I'm one of the prosecutor agents of the uh, of, uh, Office of the Public Prosecutor of Esquincla. With regard to 
the investigation, if it's been conducted or not regarding the death of Mr. Spencer, we have conducted an investigation with regard to Walter Panenzo. Within the proceeding, it has been identified that Walter Panenzo is identified and he did not have any ID documentation. And in his statement, he decided to call himself Walter Panenzo when he stated in a legal way before judicial authorities, he identified himself as Walter Alberto Panenzo Cheme. That is his full name. And with regard to Mr. Spencer, Alexander Friend Montermoso, you were asking about the investigation of the death. Yes, we have conducted uh, a joint investigation within the same proceeding because this is a same fact in which two persons were injured by gunfire with regard to the investigation conducted since 2005 when the facts occurred in May the 24th of 2005 and the National Civil Police uh, knows about the situation and has been added and these persons were at the disposal of the competent judge. The office of the attorney general started its inquiries and investigation. And for the last 16 years, that investigation is ongoing. However, as of in, for the attorney general office to uh, investigate, uh, the office first needs to identify the crime that we are uh, investigating. And the fact that it's being investigated right now, I've been in the office for two years and the 16, during these 16 years, the file was uh, investigated by several prosecutors and the file remained uh, under investigation between 2005 and 2008. Sorry, I will have to interrupt you. But it's very important, the last information that you are saying, because this is the object of the file. So please, we would like to receive this information in written, because I think that this is at the core of the questions that we are making. But because of time restrictions, I cannot give you more time because we have another hearing after this one. And now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the victims. So please send us this last information regarding the investigation because that is at the center of the discussion in this case. So please, we request the state of Guatemala to send this information in detail. Now I would like to give the floor to the petitioners. Thank you, the state of Guatemala. The petitioners will have now five minutes. Thank you, commissioners. To, with regards to what just happened, we would like to know if the persons who intervened on behalf of the state have been credited. If they're not, their interventions are testimony that should be included as new evidence. So we would like this to be excluded since there was a procedural disloyalty because we were unaware of the information they have just presented. So we do not have a right we are losing our right to defense. Now, with regards to the investigations carried out by the state of Guatemala, it amazes us to hear what they are saying, since from the reports that we have, that have been transferred through the commission, we see something different with regards to this report that was presented by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in which they say that on their report, they say that the ship um, had only five sorry, 10 shots fired with uh, two visible tracers of 20 millimeters caliber. So if they only fire 10 shots and these five, 10 bullet hopes are on the ship, which bullets are the ones that hit the actual victims? Apart from what the, um, and also we have what the captain said. So uh, out of the so-called, um, the so-called investigation does not agree with the facts they had presented because the, we don't know how many shots were fired by the Guatemalan Coast Guard. We also need to take into account what was said 
because they say that they have been uh, they there was only an investigation between 2005 and 2008 and they did identify the names and last names of mr paneso but they could not identify the victim mr spencer friend and then buried him as a john doe so these are some of the considerations we have right now i will let my colleagues speak now we demand the rejection of the testimonies because it's violating the procedural rights of the victims and the people who intervened had to be credited as witnesses so that it would be it would be possible to counter to present counter questions now with regards to what they said there was no absolute reply by the state of guatemala there is an a uh, bad faith uh, attitude. Now, with regards to the in domestic remedies of Guatemala, which was one of the questions of the commission, we would like to say that the re in resources of the family are uh, quite scarce. Mr. Spencer Friend was the family provider. He assisted his family economically. He was a fundamental pillar for the survival of Miss Francisca and Valentina. So we have also incorporated in our petition that there was a factual uh, impossibility to exhaust the domestic remedies. And this was presented by to the commission. We need to emphasize this. There was no serious investigation as it should have been about the death of Mr. Spencer Fred, and this is clear after this hearing. Now, my co-representatives will finish our intervention. Honorable Commission, in response to the question about the ongoing investigation, we can say that the investigation is still open, but they are not really investigating. As we have already expressed, 16 years have gone by without an answer. So yes, the investigation is open uh, for lesions, but there hasn't been a real investigation about the death of Mr. Spencer Friend. So we can conclude that no, they are not investigating. So far, there have been no results. No one has been held account for the death of Mr. Friend. With regards to the considerations presented about Mr. Walter Paneso, we should say that even though there was an investigation, Mr. Paneso was not giving the possibility to be heard to access a defender, he was not given up an opportunity to access to a simple and effective remedy to um, respect his rights. And this goes to show the lack of interest of the government of Guatemala to really investigate the issue. We would like to finalize by saying something else. No one knows where the ship is. Guatemala has the boat that was fired at by the Guatemalan Coast Guard. In, in which they uh, performed the extrajudicial execution of Mr. Friend. We have not been... Con respecto a eso. Por lo tanto, solicitamos a la Honorable Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos que emita su informe de fondo y acepte todas... So las... we ask the commission to accept all the human rights violations we have mentioned to the Inter-American Convention on Human Rights. Thank you. Thank you very much to the representatives of the victims. I will give the floor to Eric Acuña from the Secretariat for Petitions and Cases for him to clarify some procedural issues. Thank you, Madam President. In accordance to the request for this hearing, there are no uh, witnesses. So the allegations presented by both parties and the people who have participated are doing so as parts of the allegations of the petitioner or the state and not as witness statements or expert witness or etc. Notwithstanding, they do have the opportunity to present the written documentation and whatever observations they feel are pertinent so that it can be um, given to this to the parties. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Eric. Then we will finalize this hearing. I would, I, I, the state would like to make one final clarification. I'm sorry, but we don't have much time. We have another case, so please do it fast because it's we've gone over five minutes. So please be quick. Thank you, Madam President. 
we would just like to say that after what was manifested by the Inter-American Commission, we would like to say that the answers provided by the captain were not witness testimony. He was trying to answer the questions of the commission. Thank you. Yes, but we use that the time where the victims, the family victims spoke, but we use it within our time, a motion for order. The um, specialist for the secretariat for petitions and cases just clarified the circumstances in which the declarations were provided. So there's no motion necessary because Mr. Acuña already clarified that. Thank you very much. With that, we will finalize the hearing. I would like to uh, send a very big heart to Ms. Valentina and her mother. Thank you so much for having appeared at this hearing. And thank you to the representatives of the state and the representatives of the victim, but a special hack to the family. Thank you very much. We will finalize this meeting. Should there be any other doubts or procedural questions, you can do so through the Secretariat for Cases and Petitions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gracias. Hasta luego. Buen día. Hasta luego.